whether you're talking about individuals or organizations or, or anything else, really, most of the decisions that we make in our lifetime come down to a pretty simple uh, formula, a cost benefit analysis, if you will, to some degree or another. Should we um, pay our rent or mortgage or should we buy Taylor Swift concert tickets? You know, what's the cost and the benefit of each? What, what's the cost and benefit of spending money here instead of there? Or the opportunity cost of of using our time on this thing and not on this other thing. So virtually everything in life is really comes down to some form of cost benefit analysis, whether we like to think of it that way or not. And most of that, most of that uh, formula is informed by our core values. Really what, what is it that we value? Uh, how much do we value Taylor Swift tickets? For me, it's not that much. You would have to pay me to go to that concert instead of me paying to go myself. So that's not something I'm really going to give up a lot of time or money to really pursue for other people. That's very, very different though. And for me, if it were a different band or, or something else I was really interested in, then it might be more of a choice of what is it that I want to put my time and, and energy into. It shouldn't come really as a surprise to know that the news operates in much the same way. Um, the news organizations that we think of, we tend to think of them as, you know, it's supposed to be incredibly objective and really only thinking about, you know, what's the public benefit or whatever. But the truth is there's a lot of factors that go into how the news values things and the kind of cost benefit analysis that they run anytime they come across something that they're asked to put on the air or put in their publication or whatever. So in this video, I want to talk a little bit about those Sorry, those news values. Okay, a little, a little bit about those news values. What is it that the news organizations value and wh where do those come from? There really is a kind of established set of values that news organizations, you know, legitimate, really proper news organizations sort of follow and, and, and use as a determining factor for what's going to make it, you know, on the air or in their publication or, or on their website or whatever. We need to start this conversation though, really quickly with just a, a reminder about what is the purpose of the media? What is their purpose? What's the purpose of the media? Some people will say it's to entertain or to persuade us or to educate us or to inspire us. And you know, those are all things that the media does, uh, at kind of uh, as a byproduct of, of their, uh, of their efforts, right? They do entertain us. They can persuade us. They can educate us. They can inspire us. All of those things can be true, but in truth, that's not really the purpose of those media organizations, um, the purpose of those media organizations almost exclusively is to make money, right? That's what they're there for. Most of them are a business or at the very least have to do something to, to break even and be able to can pay their people and pay for the technology that they need and things. So it's, that's not an evil statement. I'm, I'm not saying that news organizations are evil. That's just a, a matter of fact. Most of them are privately owned corporations. Their job is to make money. And they do that by entertaining us, persuading us, informing us, inspiring us, so forth. Um, but, you know, in the end, we have to remember that they, they have a job to do and their purpose is to make money. So they're making decisions based on what's going to be the most appealing to their audiences. And by extension of that, their advertisers, right, as, as they're trying to reach their audiences and so forth. So keep in mind that the purpose of the media is to make money, right, to be successful and, and keep their organization afloat. Now, now that we know that, let's talk about news value. And we're going to use this definition by Kraft that just says that news value is essentially, or news values are criteria used by media outlets to determine whether or not to cover a story and how much resources it should receive. So again, news organizations, I can tell you, having worked in, in a news organization, you're constantly getting stories. I mean, there are slower news days and things, but you're constantly getting stories and you have X amount of time of airtime, right? To either on the TV or radio, or you have X amount of column space in your newspapers and magazines and things. And sometimes, you know, some days it's a matter of, can I fill all of this? But most of the time it's a matter of, okay, what's going to make the cut and what's not. You have to have some criteria by which you're going to say, okay, this story is going to make it in. We're going to push this. We're going to, we're going to inform our audience about this. And this one is not. So you have to have some criteria or some values that you're going to use, some system of values that you're going to use to do that. So for the most part, there are eight values that uh, news organizations tend to use as criteria here. So we're going to talk about those news values a little bit and see um, what they are. So the first of those news values is timeliness, meaning is this relevant right now? Is it happening right now? Or is it 
you know, down the road and people aren't really going to care about it that much right now. Or did it happen in the past? You know, we don't want to report on necessarily what happened last week if there's something more important or more valuable going on right now. Now, that doesn't mean you don't follow up on things and you don't look ahead to things. But but really, is this a timely issue? Is this something that people need to be aware of right now? Is this something they need to be informed about right this moment? Uh, then we also need to uh, news organizations think about proximity. Proximity just means, is it happening near where our audience is at, where they live? And it's, we care more about those things that are happening across the street than around the world, across the, you know, the other side of the world. It's not to say those things aren't important when there's a war in another part of the world or something tragic happens in another part of the world. We care, we're, we can, you know, consider that. But, but if there's something at the same time going on in our hometown that really affects us, that matter of proximity is going to you know, place more value on that story than the thing that's going on around the world that may not directly connect us. It's something we may need to be informed about, but it may not have a direct impact on us, but something going on in our community and in our, you know, in our neighborhood is obviously going to be of greater value. So news organizations look at, okay, where's our audience at? And where's the story happening in proximity to that audience? So we're going to look at timeliness. We're going to look at proximity as news organizations. And news organizations are also going to look at, at things like human interest. Okay. In other words, what's the emotional connection of this story? Um, people connect to stories based on emotion. So when you see those stories about the cute little cuddly bear that was born at the zoo, that's a human interest story. Or when you see a story about, um, you know, occasionally we'll see a story about um, you know, an athlete or somebody whose child is sick and they're, 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 they're fighting cancer or doing something like that, or it doesn't have to be an athlete or whatever, but it could be just, you know, anybody would care about that, that has that emotional connection that people were going to care about that because we are just people and we are wired to care about those things. So is this, does the story have human interest? Now, let me point out real quickly, these things are not all mutually exclusive. It doesn't have to be one or the other. Ideally, you're going to have a story that fits multiple categories. So if you have a story that is happening right now and it's of great human interest and it's happening in the in the neighborhood of your audience, well, that's a home run, right? Those, those are connecting with multiple values. But even if they're not, you're going to weigh these different things in there and see, okay, what's the human interest and emotional connection level of this story? Currency uh, basically just means, is this a hot topic? That's why I'm the, the, is it on fire? Is this something that's burning up Twitter, burning up Instagram, burning up whatever? Is it, um, you know, even, whether it's really just um, something that's happening, somebody said something and it's, and it's caught fire, it's gotten viral on social media or something like that. Or it could be just, you know, one of those water cooler discussions like um, that you see that something arguing about like a few years ago, there was this, uh, there's this thing going around. Uh, it was, I think, mostly Facebook and Instagram because it was a few years ago. But um, is this, uh, was, is it, what color is this dress? And there was an argument about whether it was like blue and purple or it was gold. And it had to do with science and different things of how you saw it. And, and so it's, it's, and that became a really hot topic because people were talking about it all the time. Um, it wasn't really necessary. It didn't really impact anybody's life in, a, in an immediate way, but it was something that everybody was talking about. So, currency when, when everybody's talking about it as a news organization you pay attention to that and you want to be kind of talking about what everybody's interested in talking about so does it have that sort of currency to it prominence by this we mean is this is the 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 person or the the place or whatever that's involved in the story is this a prominent figure is this a celebrity is this somebody who's well known that's why we hear about you know trials of celebrities and we when some celebrity gets arrested or celebrity does something that's really drastic or really good or really bad. We hear about that because these are, because they're prominent. They're people who live their lives in the public. And so um, a, a news story is going to have more value if the person involved in that, or if the location involved, you know, if we hear about a historic building, you know, a few years ago, the, the, the cathedral of Notre Dame in Paris caught on fire. That was a significant you know story in terms of prominence because you know, whether, even though we don't live, if you didn't live in Paris or even if you're not, you know, you're not Catholic. And so that's not really your cathedral or whatever. It's still, it's a landmark. It's a beautiful building. And so it was newsworthy because it involved a location uh, in that instance, or it could have been a person or whatever that is prominent, that has some celebrity and, and that people have an interest in knowing about. So what's the prominence of the person or location or, or object or whatever um, involved in that story? What's the impact? Is this something that's going to impact um, people directly, right? Is uh, having a, a strong immediate impact. So 
when there's a natural disaster, then obviously the news services in that area are going to cover that because it really impacts um, that community. That's why when you, you know, I live in the Midwest. So when there's a nasty storm going on, they'll break into TV shows and coverage and, and talk about what's the risk of tornadoes in this instance, right? Or, uh, you know, so, the, so you get natural disaster coverage like that because it has immediate impact, right? Or I remember back in 2020 and, and even a little bit beyond that, obviously we had the, the COVID pandemic during that time. That had an immediate impact on people worldwide, but a very significant impact on the way we lived our daily lives. So that story had great impact. And so the news value of that, of that particular story was, was through the roof, right? And there was no way they couldn't cover it and couldn't talk about it. Um, so just the impact that, that a story will have on people's daily lives will determine whether or not a news outlet will cover it. The novelty. We like new stuff. We like stuff that's odd, that's different, that's fresh, right? That's, that may be different, a different take on, on something, uh, but just something that's even some, a little odd, right? You, you get that a lot on local news stations, for example. A lot, a lot of times the last story they, they run will be something weird that happened. Uh, you know, you got a, a squirrel water skiing or you got something like that going on that's just unusual or odd. Somebody grew the biggest pumpkin in the history of the county or something like that. Uh, that, that's a novelty. That's an oddity, but it's interesting. It's different. It's fresh. It's new. Uh, and so that's newsworthy because of that. And so that is something that news organizations value because it, it carries that, that freshness and that newness, that novelty to it. And then finally conflict. Anytime there's conflict, when there's, you know, significant conflict, whether that's between individuals, or obviously we hear about wars a lot between, uh, between nations when they're, when, or when our country's in a, in a conflict, that's obviously a, a big news story, even if it's happening somewhere else in the world, uh, because it, it's, it probably has value. We need to know about these things, what's causing this conflict, even if it doesn't, it can directly impact us in our part of the world. First of all, it could uh, at any time, right? We know that the, the, could escalate quickly. And so we need to be aware of it there. But even if we're not, we just need to be aware of anytime there's conflict. Plus also audiences are interested in those types of things. They want to hear about those things. So that brings value to news organizations who are trying to again reach and appeal to those audiences because they know that those types of stories will have that appeal that people will tune in for that. They will read those articles. They will read those stories about conflict between individuals. That's why we get so much coverage of trials, even if they're silly celebrity trials. I mean, how much coverage did the uh, Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial get, even though it was totally no impact on really anybody else right? just on them and, and their managers and people like that. But for people like me, just everyday people like me had no impact. And yet it was on the news all the time. They were airing, airing it live throughout the day. And you, you heard about it all the time in these news organizations. They covered it because people are interested in conflict uh, and it tells, it pulls in audiences. That's why they do it. Because again, the media is there to make money. That's their job. And they do that by pulling in audiences that appeal to advertisers that they can then sell ads to really. That's the primary basis of their, their, their funding. So, so all of these things, so again, taken together, they're not in silos. They will look at all of these and the more of these it hits, the more likely a news organization is to run with that story and to carry that story. If you can hit multiple categories. So this is significant for us to know, not only as, as viewers of the news and receivers of this, but as people who may potentially want to use the news for our own purposes, right? And maybe try and get something into the news. We need to understand that this is what they value. So how can we bring some value to them? We need to consider these categories and understanding that, okay, this is how we bring value to the news and help them do their job of of making money by pulling in audiences and so forth. But we've got to do something that appeals in one of these categories. It can't just throw them one and uh, throw them a story and, and hope they pick it up out of the goodness of their heart. That's not really what they're there for. Okay. So we need to understand these news values and understand how we can then appeal to those values to give our story a better shot of getting on the air or getting in their publication. Right. Okay. Okay. Hopefully this gives you a little better understanding of and not only you know, what the media is and, and what their purpose is, but also what it is they value. And again, how we can use that information of them, you know, gauging that cost benefit and doing a cost benefit analysis, how we can help them see the benefit of what we are trying to offer them and, uh, and, and how that outweighs the cost to them of carrying that story or using that information. If you have questions about news values or 
anything uh, along those lines, please feel free to uh, reach out and send me an email. I'd be happy to chat with you about it there. In the meantime, I hope this does give you a fresh understanding of not only when you view the news, what makes it and what doesn't based on those news values, uh, but also how we can use that information then to further our own purposes by appealing to those news values when we have something we would like shared via the news.